All right, hi everybody, and maybe Elizabeth too, could you put in the minutes one last time for Shoya? Yep. And I... Hi everyone. Hi Shoya. Hi, hello everyone. Hi June, how are you? Tideway. All right, so if you could just add yourself to the minutes, it's good to have everybody here. Um, we have a pretty light agenda today, which is okay. Um, hold on. Um, so I think I was the only thing that I really had today was just kind of keeping people connected with what's going on in other parts of the chaos project. So one of the things that we are uh, discussing is the uh, developer certificate of origin, the DCO. So I don't know how familiar you are all you are all with that. So in GitHub, it requires a sign off for pull requests where you include your name <laughs> and your email address. And um, there were some some questions around whether or not we should include the DCO or not. I think we have a solution which is in the readme file, we're just going to make a DCO statement, kind of a DCO broad declaration. And then I'm thinking we would actually remove the DCO checker in pull requests. Is that how other people understand it as well? <laughs> Stun silence. Uh, I, I, hmm. I was thinking we still had to have that because of the LF. But, but well, then there would be I like a statement that, that said, you, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think the statement just says everything that, um, everything that you submit is under a, a DCO to your GitHub profile. Oh, okay. Yeah, I it is. I misunderstood that. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't even think we would add it to the readme. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. We would just say, just let's just keep doing what we're doing. So I think it's to get rid of that altogether. Um, I'll double check, but I think that's the hope. I'm pretty sure that that's when, so Ray had proposed this. Yeah, I completely misunderstood what his, uh, yeah, I, I missed that whole thing. I, yeah. Does that make sense what I'm saying though now? Absolutely. It makes more sense now. I was very confused. Just, before. Yeah, just some broad statement in the readme. And that like covers everything. Um, okay. So the, yeah. Hey, go ahead, Sharon. Uh, the the idea uh, was to make contributions easier. Yes. Am I right? You are correct. Uh, so the statement would uh, uh, would appear in the readme file of each repository. That's correct. Okay. It would say something. We can get some examples here real quick, maybe. Okay. Elizabeth, does that make sense, Choya? Yeah, it's just I'm not sure if uh, we 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 are making those statements explicit enough, uh, so people do know they are uh, every contribution uh, it's are already contain a DCO, just not just if people right. don't see hmm. the statement is. Yeah, because there is no, no now we don't have such an explicit method to that's agree fair. with I wonder uh, if, some, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. I wonder if, um, Sean, do you know, is there a way to templatize a pull request? Yeah, I mean, there are, there's actually a pull in GitHub, there is a way to create a pull request template. Um, I know we have issue templates and I, I know there's the same thing available for pull request templates. Yes. I wonder if that would help show you. Like if somebody opens a pull request, it's, there's a pointer to the readme that says this, this pull request is, you know, uh, subject to the DCO as defined here. Uh, I think that would make it explicit enough. Okay. And personally, I like the idea that we um, don't require um, to uh, to have a DCO every time you submit a pull request because personally, as a, a we, I, I used to be an 
uh, a newcomer of a community and I have no idea what a DCL is and I failed my pull request for, for several times and yeah. that's, that, 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 that is, that was a barrier. Yes, exactly. So that is okay. So maybe Sean, could I ask you to take a look at how to do that? Maybe? Yeah. Templatize. Yeah. PR? Put me down. <clears throat> put me down for that. I know how to do it. So. Um, and I dropped an example in the chat just so people can see what that looks like. Okay. And have you looked at their PRs? Like, do they do they have DCOs on them? Like I have not. State, you know what I mean? Yeah, I just uh, that's the one Ray had provided. So I just copied that. There is no doesn't look like there's a DCO here. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like what we have currently. Correct. Yeah. Shoya, for what it's worth, my first several PRs to chaos were failed because of the DCO. So <laughs> yes. And I used to work at GitHub and I still don't know how to do it. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So it looks like maybe if Sean could get if Sean could get the template figured out and then we yeah. put that the example statement that you provided Elizabeth, that could alleviate reduce our barrier and also address Shaya's point of making it more explicit for people just so they know <laughs> when they're when they're making a pull request okay great thank you for that any other comments on the dco all right um the other thing that has been coming up in the chaos project kind of at large and, and Shaya, i'm glad you're on because it would, it would be great to hear some of your thoughts on this as well so one of the the things that we've been talking about is like onboarding, you know, welcoming, welcoming newcomers and how we go about doing that. Right now, we have um, kind of statements in the participate page. We have um, Matt Cantu's new um, blog post. And Elizabeth, can you help me out here tracking down some of these things? You know what I mean, yeah, do you want them in the minutes or in the chat? The mm, either is fine. Okay. Yep. So we have the participate page, which I don't know how many of you on the call have been to, but it's a pretty intense page. There's a lot going on in the participate page. Um, it lists our calendar, it has a link out to the Slack channel, it has all of our individual meetings. There's just a lot. There's just a lot going on. Um, Matt Cantu has a blog post that he created, which is this, which is a little bit more deliberate. Just in, like it, it just kind of takes the participate page down to a series of like, like I want to participate in a meeting. I want to contribute. You know, this is these really like pragmatic things, which is everybody seemed to like that in the uh, meeting yesterday. And then we also actually have the handbook. I'm going to remember how to follow a link here. Oh, I think I have to right click it. And we have the handbook. The kind of... I think the blog, blog post was great. Yeah, I that's like, what uh, I like. Yeah, how it's how it throw as um, questions like. Mm -hmm. um, like a user user stories about how i want to get involved okay Every, you're so thank you for that shoya everybody seems to be on the same page <laughs> that, that we like this kind of condensed version so i think elizabeth i mean is is the is the hope to take basically this blog post and like link it on the web page somehow Yes, you know, I think that's okay. the ultimate goal is to have just like a button on the front page that's just a start here. And then okay. that would go to this to that page that Matt drafted up. 
um, and that would kind of funnel people towards what they're looking for specifically. Um, and it would also have it would kind of be like the hub, so it would have links to all these things, and as well as the join community form and just kind of all of it. Okay, we move this to the front of the web page <clears throat> in some form, right? Yes, okay. Um, Shoya, yeah. so one of the things, this is why I'm glad you're on too. So when you're connecting with folks in China, like, do you think this, something like this blog post would be helpful to you as well? Would there be a different approach that, that should be taken? Oh. Sure. Like, let me, ask, um, let me, let me yeah. ask it a different way. Like, do you have people reach out to you and say, how do I contribute or how do I start? Yeah, I do have, but it seems like the, um, they are kind of uh, want uh, to know something from the kiosk um i don't i don't like to say say it but yesterday this 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 man he talked to me and he said um he he, he looked at the kiosk china like the wechat account and um we we had we also had the those bi-weekly meeting but he still don't know what kiosk was doing and he still had to read this english pages <laughs> and that really <laughs> made me yeah, upset and um and I I will send the the Slack Slack inviting invite link uh, to uh, people who want to know chaos, but they just some of them uh, join in Slack, but they don't stay active. But they just kind of um still get they are still used get get used to be stay active in the WeChat group. Gotcha. So, I mean, do you think there's uh, like a more concerted effort that we need to do with respect to some of the participate pages or the about pages with respect to making them available in Chinese? Would that help? Um, well, I think the pay this page, uh, like where should we start is good, is great. Um, and for maybe for people who really want to join it, it provide enough information. Gotcha. And, and you think yeah. it's okay to have it in English only? Yes, yes. Okay. I think uh, if he just want to read, he don't want to read any English at all, it's really difficult to really get involved in a community. I mean, we, we can provide a Chinese context, but some, it is it, difficult to make everything Chinese. Gotcha. Agreed. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like really maybe the first step, even from your perspective, Joya, in China, would really just be to elevate a page like this to the web page. And that might yes. be a good place for all of us to start. And then I think the other thing that we're trying to do is like when people ask whether they're in China, whether they're in Nigeria, whether they're in the United States or Europe, is that we all point them to the same spot. You know what I mean? And so we would all just basically point them to this page, as opposed to some of us pointing them to the participate page, some of us pointing them to the handbook, some of us pointing them to this blog post. So if we can create some consistency on how we help onboarding people, I think that's a good first step. Elizabeth, I saw you were unmuted. Did you have a comment as well? Uh, I was just going to say it might make sense down the line if we have people who are um, who want to translate a page like this into different languages. Um, I think would be great. I think that would be super welcoming to show that you know this is a big community and it's so big that we, you know we we have this page in Chinese because there are resources that are specific to our Chinese community and we have that that blurb, that little paragraph on the participate page, but it might be nice to have like a tailored, where should I start for the Chinese community? Since there are such differences, you all have, you know, meetings and the WeChat accounts and all of those things. So um, just maybe in the future, if we have somebody that's passionate about doing that, um, I think that would be great. 
not to volunteer work for somebody. (laughs) I don't want to give someone more work, but it would be awesome. (laughs) I'm wondering if maybe we should like make a, I don't know what it would look like, but like a visual of like this page at the top and then like clicking here, where does that take you? You know what I mean? Like some sort of map. Yeah. When you were talking about when you were talking about there are like Chinese resources, whether it's through the podcast or WeChat that Shoya is working on, um, like how do like if somebody could visualize like how do I get there yes. <laughs> from this page? Like what does that look like? Yes. Um, the Slack channel like cuts across everything. Maybe we could I don't know how to visualize this, but think about it a little bit. Okay. Are there any other comments on on this? Thank you, Shoya, and thank you, Elizabeth, for your feedback on this. All right, cool. Um, Let's see, just a few housekeeping things. I just had just the spreadsheet. So the metrics tracking spreadsheet is being updated just a little bit to kind of, honestly, just be a little bit more contemporary with the way we do work in 2021, 2022. Um, So there are just a few changes there. This is kind of where we're at in the chaos project as a whole. We are uh, thinking a little bit about kind of what we have available to us in the chaos project and whether or not it is uh, contemporary enough t- to live in 2022. A lot of our documentation, a lot of our work was done say four years ago. And we just wanna make sure that it continues to be updated accordingly. Yeah, I think, well, I think the metric model work is, I think the metric model work is helping us. I, I think <clears throat> updating updating the metrics is important. I think the metrics model work is more important gotcha yeah and i mean the metrics model work i I would say that was actually the prompt for some of these spreadsheet changes yeah um, as well as our own reflection so personally i think 2022 the coming year is going to be a year to kind of reflect on the work that we've done and just make sure that it's (laughs) it's kind of up to speed with the current year i don't know elizabeth or sean do you have more comments on that that was all I had to say. Uh, yeah, okay. no, I think you said it all. Okay. All right, cool. It's just like anything, right? Like any business or any project. Like when you look back at the stuff you did four years ago, sometimes you're like, oh, <laughs> that needs to be updated. <laughs> that's a little bit old or doesn't read quite right. So I think that's what we're starting to realize in the chaos project, which is cool that we're in a position where we can reflect on the work that we've done. Um, yeah, go ahead, June. Oh, just, just the, thank, thank you all. Thank you, everyone. And finish this, this, uh, this article. Awesome. Awesome. You are welcome. So I, um, I put in the notes, I solved the, uh, template problem. And it's pretty easy. If, if you tell me the text, then we just create a file inside each repository with that template text. And every time you create a pull request, it just pulls it in. Oh, sweet. Mm-hmm. So basically, mm-hmm. my thought would be then we would just get that markdown file, or I'm sorry, not even that, just update the readme that has some declaration. Yeah, well, I think you update know. the markdown. Well, if you update the markdown file with the stuff that you want, in each pull request, then every time you create a pull request, it'll put that text in the yep. pull request right. body automatically. Okay. Or could it, you could it also it, just put a pointer? Could it just say like, there you are by mm-hmm. issuing a pull request, you're agreeing to a DCO, here it is. Could yeah, it, with that? yeah, you can okay. put whatever Sweet. you want in it, yeah. Sweet. All right, cool, thank you. Um, all right, great. Um, this is a, the next comment with respect to metrics reviews was 
Um, this is just more of a, an issue around translation. So as we're doing this review that we just talked about coming in 2022, one of the things we're doing is we're looking at our metrics that were produced particularly a long time ago, and some of them require some updates. Again, just because the text is old or the context has changed a little bit. Um, so there will be more um, oh, for translations on some of these just kind of modified metrics. Um, it would look and feel a lot like just the way that the new metrics worked. Um, but so I don't think the volume would be as high, certainly for the for any release. Um, but I think there will be some metrics that need to be looked at from a translation perspective again, if that's okay with folks. Um, all right. So meeting times over the holidays. Again, this is still kind of housekeeping. Um, we are okay so elizabeth you're gonna to have to tell me if i'm right or wrong we are not meeting oh, no. next week we're this, not this is the u.s thanksgiving and then we are off from don't tell me december 9th to January 10th. That is correct. Okay. Happy holiday. Yes, so <laughs> we will not be having meetings and we'll send this out to the list as well. Um, but just it's just time off for everybody. Um, so just FYI. Yes, and definitely show you a happy holiday. <laughs> I can make lots of <laughs> lots and lots of cookies. Uh, all right. Um, so Elizabeth or Sean, is there anything else that you wanted to bring forward from a community update perspective? I think it's always nice to to bring these connections forward. Anything you think I missed that we've been talking about? Nothing comes to mind. I think you're very thorough. Yeah, I think we, I think we have, a couple things I would add is we have some really good work coming up with Augur and the tools that are part of chaos that, that is slowly getting released. And we also have a lot of interesting work on dependencies in the risk working group. And we're, we're working towards a week from yesterday, having a metrics model to demonstrate um, with code using Augur data and Jupyter Notebook. So I think, I think those are some of the more concrete things that we're doing to advance the models and the software part of Augur, which I think helps make it concrete and answer the question your manager had, what is this? <clears throat> Without necessarily having to read things in English. Cool. Thank you, Sean. All right. Um, all right. We'd be... We can't forget about Shoya and her work with Chaos Cast in China. Uh, yeah, that's so, awesome. Yes. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> it's really awesome. So thank you, Shoya. And I guess maybe one of the things that we could ask is, is there anything, Shoya, that you could use from us that would help you in any way? You know, human support? <laughs> um, like, <laughs> Social media distribution, whatever it might be. <clears throat> yeah, we 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 had uh, we also had had, had amazing editors. Um, I think yeah, we had a group to uh, run this episode. Uh, maybe uh, one one thing is if we want to because uh the the episode is uh hosted on the platform, it's not it, it's rely on this platform if we want to uh, because i know chaoscast is hosted on fireside uh, right. and um it's, it's it's like independent more independent and uh but but we, we we to to make it easy uh more easy to spreading the chinese uh community we uh because shimalaya it can uh is it easily uh share uh, in wechat so um Almost uh, most of the podcast we use are uh, we use Himalaya to host our 
podcast. But but if we want to want this podcast to show on a more in, independent web page, um, I think we need to figure out a way to do that. Would hosting it on Fireside help at all? Yes. Okay. Um, but 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 you but if we also uh, release them um, on the same chaos cast page, maybe people will get confused, um, like clicking to an episode, but listen to the wrong language. <laughs> they don't, ex they don't ex expect. Right. So like this, you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, certainly here we can, it would be easy enough to probably create just another page that was about chaos cast in Chinese. I don't know. Let, let's think about it, but it might make a lot of sense to connect essentially the work that's here, not necessarily the site, but if we're hosting this on Fireside, how we think about this landing page as providing both English and Chinese podcasts. Okay. We could also do have... a, uh, at yeah. the navi navigation bar where you, how you got to that page, where it was like, oh yeah, from the chaos site, uh, we could do like a sub one that said podcast one in a, one for English and one for Chinese, and then just point right. okay. for now anyway, I think that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. And actually we could immediately, I mean, I know it's not the perfect place, Shoya, but like we could immediately just point here. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Actually, I don't, I, I think um, it's also okay to just link to the page of Shimalaya if uh, we are, we all think this is, because I, I don't have particular, um, like, requirement for the, the page of, of it. It's just um, how we, how we want to make it because personally, uh, if we want this episode to spread uh, spread in China, uh, I, I suppose uh, Shimalaya is um, enough because it can also provide the RSS link for people uh, who want to uh, listen it on maybe the, the, the Apple podcast. Gotcha. Okay. Um, great. Okay, so let's just start there then. We'll just keep it on Shimalaya and just link off of this page for the time being. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether it's, yep, okay, let's do that. Um, Elizabeth, could you, would it, would you be able to maybe make a mention on, on Twitter? We have the podcasts. Yeah, I was going to do that. I wasn't sure how, what the reach would be, um, but I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah. I kind of like it for two reasons. One is to highlight the work that Shoya is doing. And then the other is just to kind of also signal that the chaos project is uh, thinking about this, you know, translations and, and global inclusion as well. Yeah, excellent points. Okay, cool. All right. Um, anything else, Shoya, that would be helpful from your from your end on the podcasts? Yeah, that's all. The, yeah, that's all for now. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right. Well, June, uh, you have an open source dot com article. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. And thanks to to Sean. I think Sean and Elizabeth. Yeah. Did you just yeah. kind of provide some feedback yeah. as well? Yeah. So June, first, do you want to uh, do you want to talk about it or tell us a little bit? Perfect. All right. Did you want to tell us about it a little bit, or <laughs> just it is what it is? <laughs> feel feel better. <laughs> this is great. And uh, in 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 China, and uh, the WeChat WeChat uh, public uh, uh, also trans translate my uh, translate <clears throat> this talk. <clears throat> So there was a translated version of this too. Is that what you just said? In China, 
嗯，公众号怎么说，小雅 ？In China， 呃、uh, ，we the WeChat official account， 呃、uh, ，we had we had that one for chaos， but、um, yes， 嗯、um, ，we we translate this pay,、uh, this article in Chinese and um is an、um, is not um not 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 read not published uh through chaos WeChat official account but Other official account, but、uh, this is um this is got um promoted、okay. through the through WeChat because it's a strange phenomenon that like everything uh have to be promoted through WeChat. The social media is highly rely on this app. That's just the way it is, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> So is the the translated version of this is hosted somewhere else? Is it hosted on WeChat or just hosted somewhere else? Oh,、nope. WeChat office the、uh, official WeChat website like this. Interesting. Post, post, yeah, post this talk on.、Um. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you for that, June, and thank you. Um, Elizabeth and Sean for giving some feedback. This is wonderful. Yeah. 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 This is wonderful. Cool. All right. All right.、Um, maybe the last thing for today. There was somebody added this. I didn't. I I added this. I added this. Okay. Yeah. I just.、Uh, yeah. I just、uh, trying to use.、Um, I just made a problem. The problem is,、uh, I I just want to use one metric, but I I have some problem. Um, for example, I have to I want to use this project popular popular metric. So、mm -hmm. I trying to figure out, um,、uh, whether my project、uh, is、uh, popular. So I I want I trying to put this. Metric on my dashboard, and I, for example, uh, maybe my project have one hundred one hundred contributor, and maybe we we have uh one thousand uh number download, um per per one day, but I also don't know whether my project is uh um popular or not. So, gotcha.、Hmm, yeah. So, so I just figure out so whether we need to add some suitable algorithm、oh. in the metric. Oh. And、um, this is my problem. And、um, I just uh, post uh, post one, maybe one example. Like,、uh, so I, this is an interesting point. So I think, and Sean, I don't know if you can kind of speak to this as well. But so the the issue is that you can see that project popularity is a composite metric, right, of many other things. And I think、so、we might call a metric model today. Yeah, we, we actually might. <laughs> actually, that's probably fair. I mean, we might want to start thinking that way that we just、yeah. move composite but, metrics out to metrics models. But yeah, I think, I, I think composite metrics. Not you know, they are how we've talked about what we call metric models now for a long time. But I think we less well, we had less of an understanding of what they were for. So I think with June, like, have you? Sean, been through a process with other organizations where project popularity is something that they care about? Because I think June is and June. You can tell me I'm wrong, but like wondering how to aggregate these metrics, but then also wondering like what the directionality, like up down, what that means yeah, with respect to popularity. So we can put all this number in the dashboard. Maybe we we know how many how many folks, how many folks per one day, 
um, so, we know how many issues, we know how many contributors. We, I mean, we can get all this number, but, but maybe we don't know which number is popular or which number is not. Which number is the contributor? Maybe. How, how can... No, I think it's like, like um, if you put all these things into a dashboard, right? Right. Yes. Like we just so, put all so, number in the dashboard. This so this reminds me very much of the heat light love dashboard that Remy de Cosmaker put together at Twitter when he was there. And, and the reason it does is because heat is, was for in terms of popularity, the heat dimension of popularity was represented by developer contributions, new developers, quick actions on, quick actions on pull requests, um, things like that. Love was some of the community responsiveness kinds of activity metrics that we talk about now. And then love was people using the software uh, which is that's harder to get at but you can you can look at clones downloads things like that and and i think with some of these metric models if you're really trying to get a project popularity i think that heat light love as a way of popularity has dimensions that relate to developers investment from a community or a set of companies or just flat out use right so there's the consumer the creator and the sponsor that all contribute to i think these three dimensions of popularity and remy remy called that heat light love which i thought was fantastic I mean, it was a really, really good analogy in the English language. Anyway, I don't know. What you it have that Chinese. available, Sean? The link I, to the... <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I, know. I, I have, I have a, I have screenshots of it somewhere. I just have to dig them up. Um, okay. I don't have them at the ready, which I should, because it was a really cool dashboard. Um, but, but let me, I can, let me see if I can dig that up real quick this morning and put it back in the notes or send it to the yeah, Slack channel. Like you can put it like right here or Slack as mm -hmm. well. So June, you I, think your points are, I think your points are well taken. Um, would you be okay if we took this metric back to the value working group to try mm -hmm. to address the concerns that you have? Value working group. Okay. Okay. That's where this metric lives. And so the value working group meets, I think we meet again tomorrow, actually. And we could talk about this to provide better insight for you. Okay. Would that be okay? Okay. 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 Review this metric in the value work group okay yeah and it's okay i mean if you can make it that's great i was just thinking as the metric resides there and i think i understand your concern that just simply bringing together <laughs> these kind of smaller metrics is you can do this but it's not clear what the combination of them means with respect to understanding popularity so i think we need to provide more precision in the metric to help make that clearer. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, just, just one question. Um, yeah. I, I saw all of the metrics. I, I just uh, found out so there are small metric uh, about the uh, math. Just, uh, okay. yeah. yeah, do, do we, consider about uh, uh, some some math or just because we don't uh, need it so we we not uh, um, use it use some of the math or just uh, 
uh, we don't consider it. So the issue is that some of these like 13 metrics you don't consider, is that right? Um, I'm not sure no, if I no. get Green's point. Um, I, I, I think maybe um, it, it's, I, I always get this kind of feedback that um, Chaos ha has many metrics like we discussed in yesterday on the podcast <clears throat> that, that people are a little overwhelmed and still don't know how to use this metric and maybe um some um maybe um the uh june's point is if there are metrics that makes things computable that we can <laughs> calculate and give a number about like healthy unhealthy or sub healthy sub healthy exactly. i like i like that term sub healthy <laughs> yeah, Jean's point is um why we don't have some like um algorithm uh, and models to calculate uh give some kind of result that people can just take and use gotcha. and uh, yeah. Gotcha which I think is kind of special. Do we need a suitable algorithm for this metric? Okay, so let's, um, June, thank you for bringing this up. Um, I'm trying to, do people have thoughts about how to, to move forward with making the project popularity metric clear? I'm wondering if the, technically the, first move within the chaos project is to move this to a metrics model. So I, not just an individual metric. I think it includes a lot of metric. I mean, it, 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 it like walk like it in the American, the American idiom is it, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. And which means that it really has all the characteristics of a metrics model, I think, and that gives us a sort of a, a wider range of expressing each of these discrete metrics in a composite way. It doesn't force us to show each discrete metric on a page, which is harder to interpret. But I, I don't know if that fits Joya's objective, but that would be my thought. Yes, I know this is a difficult, difficult problem, and I, I, I don't, I don't know how to. Um, it, it's complicated that some, some, some in some situation mm -hmm. that people what what people want is a result, and um, but bring out these perspectives are really important, and it's hard to give a really give, give a result because things are different under different situations. Um, so still the problem is how do we use these metrics? Um, and it's not just um, um, project, the, the, the metric um, project popularity. I mean, uh, some this like popularity, this kind of metric under value working group uh, are more com composite, but um, we also have more uh, automatic uh, not automatic uh, metric like more like an autumn more in a, a, a smaller um smaller kind of dimension like issue pr um like pr response time is just like one one dimension you need to look at but popularity is a com composite um Thing that you need to look at many dimensions, and you're still um, not sure uh, you, wh wh which var var variables you need to select, and uh, what kind of uh, and how you can calculate the. Uh, maybe you can calculate how pop popular your project is. Um, and th these are the feedbacks and discussions um, where I. I, I, I received and I 
I also, me myself, had this kind of concern, but I'm not sure uh, if um, I made I made this clear. It's just um, I think um, the metric, the, the um, whole oh, all these metrics we have, we we uh, maybe we need to um, figure out a way to uh, let to make them can be well applied. Um, for people know how to use them. Yes. So do you right. think do you think the metric model approach accomplishes that or do you think we should look at Yes. Should, okay, okay. I think metric models is a way. I agree. I think metrics model is a way and I'm wondering if in the metrics model so for something let's just pretend this is a metrics model, not an individual metric. But I'm wondering if in the metrics model, to June's point, then we can say, listen, you know, some of these are deployable from trace data. Because I think that's sort of what June is looking for, like, you know, maybe some of these component parts are not things that, sh that are going to be looked at. So say social media mentions, I'm just making up job postings and people attending events. But from trace data, we can get 80% of what constitutes this metrics model. And I'm wondering if in the metrics model, Sean, it would make sense, you know, as we're adding like these deployments, say in Jupyter. Yeah. In the notebooks, yeah. like we could start saying like, here are some technical ways to start deploying this model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I like that approach. I really want to find Remy's heat light love because I think it's a really good metaphor for this. Well, and if you can, yes, if you can find the heat light love, it might help us then, like, I, I kept that in the minutes that it might help us kind of further reconsider this new, newly crowned metric model. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I know I, 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 already done. <clears throat> I, I know I, I know I found it. Um, Okay. okay, I think I, I think well, I found drop it, it in here so. when you can because we're at the end of time. All right. So June and okay. Shoya, thank you for talking through this and asking us to consider this. Um, and consider it considered. We we we're going to try to move this forward positively. That can be more helpful to you, June, um, and also to help address the questions that you get, Shoya, from people like how do you deploy these in meaningful ways. And we're working on it and we will I think we can work with this one as a as a next candidate. Any other comments on that? That's good. Maybe we, we could uh, um, put this on match model and uh, put more um, details and make, put more details to this, discuss this. Yes. Yeah. And part of the part of the details that we're talking yeah. about in the metrics model yeah. is actually having are you familiar with Jupyter notebooks? Yeah. Okay. But even having like available notebooks that kind of technically show how to deploy this. Yeah. And so there would be more details for sure. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, everybody. Uh, did you find something, Sean? Yeah, I did. Um, <clears throat> just drop. Do you have a picture of it? Just drop it in here. I have. I have a link to the live version. They've modified it. They've made it more. They have taken some of the consolidated perspectives on heat, light, and love out, and so I have somewhere a fork of it before they did that. So I will. Um, uh, Sean will find the original fork. Uh, okay. uh, which is what Remy and I presented okay. at. That was the one at ChaosCon 2019 in Brussels. I remember it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. This is always a very good discussion. I really appreciate everybody's time.
So have a great day and gosh, we may not see some of you until <laughs> until maybe after Thanksgiving or maybe even until 2022. So all right, thank you everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.